Everybody, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful week. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you all about the radar chart. We are going to build this radar chart together, also known as a spider plot. This spider plot is uh, an analysis of multiple referees in the NBA and the amount of fouls that they call per category. We're also going to build this radar chart with six different categories analyzing hotel reviews for three different hotels. And now, after that, I'm going to show you how to manipulate the radar chart. So you can have here, you can see these are closed lines. You can also have it as an open line. You can have it as a nonlinear radar chart. You can have this as a radar chart without the markers. You see here we have markers, and here we do not have markers. This radar chart. Uh, it has a different direction and this one right here is obviously filled in the lines are filled in so we're going to learn how to do this which actually covers this chapter of the plot lead documentation you see i'll have this link under the video and you can see here example code of how to build some radar charts we're also going to go over this documentation which is the the, the radar chart with plotly express and we're going to go over several if not most of the parameters in the radar chart. So to get started, I recommend going into my GitHub. And if you haven't liked it, or I don't think you can like GitHub, but um, start it or fork it, feel free to do so. I would actually encourage you so you can be alerted of any updates that I make here. Go into Plotly Graphs, then go into Radar Chart. And you'll see here the two CSV sheets that we're using. You can click on them, but you don't need to download them because we are going to connect to them in the code directly online. And we're going to use these two Python files. So uh, click on them, copy the code, and then put it inside your PyCharm or Visual Studio code uh, or any Python ID so you can get started. All right. So pause the video, download it. And once you got it, let's go into your Python ID and let's do this together. So I'm going to work now on the radar, radar slash hotel or, or hyphen hotel.py file. In this file you see here, we are importing the Plotly, Plotly Express library and pandas because we're going to use pandas. Uh, the data comes from uh, Kaggle and this person is the owner of the data. And I'm going to connect to the data and uh, that is on my GitHub and make a pandas data frame out of it. And in this line right here, we're just going to take three hotels. We're limiting the hotel, the uh, data frame to only three hotels because it has 20 or 50 hotels. But I just want to show you, show you three. And this is good practice because if you start having five lines, 10 lines or 20 lines, it's really hard to distinguish between the overall quality of rating of each hotel. So we're just going to keep it to three separate hotels here. And here we have four separate referees that we're going to do in the second part of the video. Okay, so we have three hotels. I'm printing out the first 20 rows and nine, eight columns. So you'll see here we have hotel 20 rows. They're all hotel one that have 20 different users that gave the Hotel 101 ratings. And there's multiple columns. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to group by hotel ID. I want to see the average of each column. So instead of seeing 20 different or 40 different users with 40 different ratings per category per hotel, I'm going to do the average for every single category. Average rating for every category for every hotel. So this means that, that I end up with three different rows. When I print this here, I'm printing this. These three rows, I have an average rating for cleanliness, average rating for uh, checking rate, for uh, business rate, all these six right, uh, per hotel. So as you can see here, Hotel 101, cleanliness 4.35. If you go to the uh, radar chart, cleanliness 101 is 4.35. So this is accurate. But pretty soon we're going to plot it. We're going to see how it plots. So now we have this data. 
but to plot the data on a radar chart you have to make sure that it is it is a long format this data right here that we that we manipulated is a wide format even when we first started the original CS CSV is a wide format because it has very few columns or few rows and many different columns so we're going to change this from wide to long format like this using the pandas data frame melt i'm not going to go into how to melt your data with panda data with uh, with pandas because that's a whole different tutorial but you can just google how to melt your data pandas melt data um, stack overflow and you you'll see several different examples of how to melt uh, data from wide to long so now we can print our data and if we print it we see that we have uh, only three columns the hotel id the category which has um, six different cat unique categories the category categories that we chose here and for each category we have an average rating you see 101 102 then again 101 102 or three and again and so on and so on until we finish the categories so now that our long data is is done is uh, finalized and prepared now we can finally plot the data inside a radar chart so to plot a radar chart or a spider plot with Plotly Express, you can do it in multiple ways. We're going to use the line underscore polar, which you can see here in the documentation that I'm also going to add under the video. So first you define what data you're going to use, and we're going to use the pandas data frame that we were um, manipulating up, in, up to this point. Then we're going to declare the R. Now the R, as you can see from the documentation, is the radial axis. Radial axis is all these, all these lines here. 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, these, these white circular lines. 2.53, these are the radial axis. So if we say that we want the rating column to be the radial, radial axis, that's why we have these numbers here. And usually the radial axis is supposed to be a numeric value, right? Because these are numbers. Then the theta, as you can read from the documentation, theta means angular axis. An angular axis on a radar chart is everything that you see on the outside. These, This um, uh, last line right here, you see six different categories on the outside, which is why you see here it's the category col column. So you have here multiple rows for each, um, with, uh, with each category repeating itself, but it will take the unique category, and that is why we have six different categories here from the category column. You can call this any, you can call this column anything you want. But this is typically the theta, the angular axis, is typically um, text. And then we're going to distinguish each line by color. Because each line is a hotel, so each hotel we're going to give a color. If not, if we did not do color, if we took this out, then it would just be black, 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 and it would be hard to distinguish. And that is why we get this legend of hotel per color. And then we do line close, true, and that's why you see these lines that are closed. If we change this to line close false and run this, you would see that this happens. The line doesn't close, it stays open. Another thing you can do is change this from linear to spline. If you put spline here, then you would end up with this. And I, I kind of like spline because spline allows you to see uh, a little bit better, in my opinion, uh, each hotel and which hotel is slightly better than the other. In this case, I would say that probably maybe the red and green are fairly equal, hotel two, two and three, but hotel 101 is inferior or gets inferior ratings almost across the board. The only place where it has a higher rating than both hotels is in this business service. All the rest has a lower rating. So I wouldn't really say on average but this hotel is very good. So this is spline. Now, what I could do also is put hover name hotel ID. 
if you, I, I can choose not to use this, but if I use this hotel ID hover, you'll see right here, hotel 101, hotel 103. This is what hover means. You are actually adding that as the title of the hover tooltip, 102, 103, and so on and so on. Now, if you have this hotel ID, then you can already, if you don't have this right here, if hover data is not, you don't change anything, it will automatically add hotel in the hover data. You see how you have hotel twice? So I don't need hotel twice, 102, 102, because this is uh, by default, this is true. So because I put hover name hotel ID, I'm going to put this as false. And that way, I'm not going to see hotel twice. I'm only going to see it once. Okay, marker is true. If I put this false, you'll see these uh, markers, these dots. If I say false, then you will have no dots, no markers. You can also change the label. So instead of rating, that is the rating column right here. You can change this if you want to, any word that you want. I'm, if I change this to stars, then you'll see here that instead of rating, you'll see stars. Rating 3.75, you will see stars 3.75. Text hotel ID, doesn't make a lot of sense to do it right here because we already have that text. But if we had another column, which gave another piece of information on a particular hotel, then you can add this column here. But now it doesn't really make a lot of sense because we already know which hotel is each line. Um, so if it's a different category or a different column, you can probably add it here under the text. Then we have range. And range is a way to define your radial range, the uh, range of R, of the radial axis. So here it doesn't really matter. And why it doesn't matter? Here... It doesn't matter because all ratings, if you look at the CSV sheet right here, you'll see that all ratings, well, it's hard to see here, actually, um, are between 1 to 5, only 1 to 5. So there's no need to say limit it to 10 or limit it to 3 because it's always going to be uh, 0 to 5 or 1 to 5. You'll see in the next code with uh, uh, referees, that some ratings or some uh, files can go up to 25 or 100, so it makes sense to limit it. Then we have direction clockwise. Look at this. This is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, look at the service rating. Service rating, and if we do cl clockwise, then we get the service rating right here. And you can read more about the direction and what it means right here. And then we have a similar property with uh, angle, start angle. It depends where you want to start it. You can do 0, you can do 90, and you can read more about it um, here where it says um, 0 be, uh, being due east and 90 being due north. Um, I wish I could explain that to you. I really did not understand that, but I thought that it was kind of cool that you can change the, uh, the angle. Okay, lastly, if you want to add... Um, fill to each closed line. You close the lines, true, and then you add fill to self. And when you do that, what happens is that you get this. You get lines that are closed. I don't really like it because it's kind of hard to distinguish when there's when the all the lines are filled. But if it's one one a hotel or two hotels, it might make more more sense. Okay. So this was the radar chart for for the hotel rating. The last one I want to show you in, in the next minute or two is the one for the uh, basketball, the one for referees, right, and the fouls that they call. So I chose to add four referees and only three different foul uh, categories. And this analyzes how many um, calls uh, each referee does for each category. So you can see that Ben Taylor uh, had in 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 the season 2016-2017, the regular season, not the playoffs. Um, he had 
called 22 fouls for technical technical fouls. He had 17 shooting block fouls and 11 kickball fouls. Now, obviously, you have to take this radar chart and this data with a grain of salt. You have to know your data. Uh, there's a big difference between there might be a big difference between referees. Let's say uh, Ben might have um, uh, uh, been a referee in a lot fewer games or a lot uh, more games than uh, Bill Kennedy. And that's why Bill Kennedy has fewer fouls. So you got to think about that before you analyze the data. If all referees uh, went to the same amount of games, then this is a good, um, good, interesting analysis that you can see for example here how Bill Kennedy almost around the um, uh, across the board doesn't call a lot of fouls while the green one uh, Benny Adams certainly calls a lot of fouls now here I just want to show you one last thing here it's uh, useful to add the range because fouls can go anywhere let's play this so you can see what you play the you can see the DF here the data frame here you can go anywhere from like six fouls to like 29 fouls 30 fouls so you might want to limit it so you don't see uh, uh, outliers if there's one of them that has a hundred it's gonna make everything seem a lot smaller let's look at this if we put five to let's say 90 look at what happens everything becomes a lot smaller you see so we don't want that to happen so we can limit it from 2 to, I don't know, 30 and see um, how it looks a lot better. And this is where the range R is so useful. Okay, that is it. I highly recommend you read the documentation. I really want you to know how to read the documentation and know how to create these radar charts on your own. Um, and also here's, these are really good examples of initial code that you can use to build your own spider plots. If you do have any questions, please ask them under the video. I'll try my best to answer them. And don't forget to um, also download these files from my GitHub. Thank you very much. I hope to see you next time as well. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, this is uh, content that's um, fully supported by members like you. So uh, I hope to see you there. And that's it. Always remember, we're better together, so help each other out. Have a good day.